this is not a com community service. This is a, a good feeling story, and you've written a book about it. Yeah. And uh, well, I saw you what five, four years ago at Kingsway, and the one or two days after you found out you were clear. And you were going out on the golf course. You didn't look like you were going to make 18, but you were damned if you were going to, for sure. <laughs> remember? I don't exactly remember, but okay, I believe you, you. You were walking out there, and I'm saying, Tom, I'm not sure you're going to make it. What did I look like? I must have looked oh. pretty bad. You look you look frail. Frail. But you don't look frail anymore. No. Your color wasn't as good as it is now. No. <laughs> Tom had lung cancer, and uh, what stage were you diagnosed with? What's stage 3A. And everybody knows who's gone through people that with cancer, the different stages of cancer. Yeah. And lung cancer kills a lot more people than anybody realizes. Right. Is it all smoking related? No. Tell us about it. Well, um, that's the first question people ask when you tell them you have lung cancer. They'll say, oh, did you smoke? And the reality is that smoking is the leading cause of lung cancer. But today, 60% of the people that have lung cancer either smoke and quit, they probably quit decades ago, many people. And, uh, and uh, there's a large percentage of people, 15 to 20 percent of the people with lung cancer today never smoke. Right. Now, the second question people say, oh, it must have been secondary smoke. Now, the answer is, uh, and I, I tell people this because I kind of turn the statistics on its head and I say, do you realize that only 15 percent of smokers will develop lung cancer? So you could smoke three packs a day for your entire life and never get lung cancer. Only 15% of smokers will get lung cancer. So I'm not endorsing smoking by any means. Uh, you know, yeah. it's a bad habit. But people get addicted when they're young, when they're in high school, and uh, they're addicted for their whole life. They finally grow up, decide it's really not worth it, quit, and then the next thing you know, they've got cancer. A, dec a decade or two later, they've got cancer. And that's and how many? Pe and it's never been to me, Tom. It's never been recognized how many people will suffer a heart attack or stress disorder after they give up smoking, because smoking was that release for them. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what was the biggest obstacle you had had to overcome while going through the treatment for cancer? Was it the chemo? Was it? You know, I think that people have lung cancer. One of the problems, uh, first of all. Um, I had a very dear friend, uh, sister diagnosed with exactly the same stage of disease as me at exactly the same time. She was exactly the same age. Um, and she was dead within six months. Six wow. Months. And you go, well, why, what was the difference between her and I? And I think the, the difference was that... Um, I think that a lot of people with lung cancer have a feeling of guilt. They feel like they brought it on themselves, um, and they give up, and they don't fight. They, they mentally, they, they're not a fighter. To this me, woman was unmarried. She yeah. had no family, and uh, uh, she didn't want to go through the treatments. And so, uh, six months later, she was dead. In my case, I have uh, three beautiful daughters and a wife, and. There's no way I'm not going to fight tooth and nail to stay alive. I think that was the difference between her and I. And uh, reason for living. You have to have, pause, a, you have, to have a reason for living, and uh, you, you shouldn't feel guilty. It's you know, it's a disease. It, you know, I don't feel guilty about it. I wish I had never smoked. Don't get me wrong. Um, but um, how, long ago, how, guilt, long ago, how long ago? How long ago had you? Problem. How long ago had you quit? Uh, I had quit a year or two. Uh, before? Before, yeah. I had turned 50 and said I was going to quit at 50. So that's what I did. I, I was diagnosed at 52. Wow. Right. And I'm five years later. So I just celebrated five years of survival. You know, the, the survival rate for stage 3 lung cancer, do you know what it is? Uh, I think you told me it's like 10 or 16%. Well, the overall survival rate is 15%. That's right. stage okay. 1 through 4. But for stage three. three, it's 5%. For stage four, it's 2%. So when you go and look at those statistics and you start to break them down, if you're stage <laughs> one and two, you have a pretty good chance of survival. Stage in three and four, not so much. And the problem is most people are de detected at stage three and four. 
which is why it's such a deadly disease. But at the same time, Tom, I have worked with many, seen many uh, family members who have had cancer, and my mm -hmm. uncle gave up. I mean, he didn't care about it anymore. Right. And so it took over his body. Yeah. Um, what's the worst place that people who are diagnosed with cancer where, where it's going to go the fastest through their body? Is it is it the liver? I've heard liver cancer is the worst. You know uh, what you I'm know, saying? I don't know exactly the answer to that question. I'm not a doctor, but uh, I'm going to say, at least with, with respect to lung cancer, most people don't die of cancer to the lung. It metastasizes to the brain. Yeah. And they die of brain cancer. So a lot of okay. times people will say, uh, what did he die from? Well, he died from brain cancer. Yeah, would that be primary cancer? Probably not. Yeah, it's probably okay. lung cancer. And it goes to the bone. Brain to the bone. I don't know why. That's uh, for lung cancer. I know that's the case. <coughs> breast now, cancer, same thing. You know, people get breast cancer and it goes to the lung, goes to the liver, it goes to right, right. Through when the it metastasizes, you know, yeah. you're you're in trouble. Uh, you've got the free to breathe, run and walk, and that's something you've done for five years now. Uh, this will be the fourth year. Fourth year, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the free to breathe is uh, coming up November tenth, this Saturday. Right. Um, you need to sign up today if you want to run, walk, or well, show actually, up. Actually, hey, you can you just show up. You can't sign up today because the online sign up is en on. has ended. But you can show up. You can. Uh, yeah. Uh, event day is uh, Saturday. Saturday. Registration is <coughs> six a.m. Saturday, November tenth, six a.m. Out at Charlotte Sports Park. You'll see the big sign. Um, Race starts at eight fifteen. And you can check out all the information uh, online at freedombreathe.org, Southwest Florida. Right. And folks. You've got a memory walk out there at 8.30. You've got the, uh, about 9.30, the end of the rally and the awards presentation. It's right out at Charlotte Sports Park. Um, the event day is $20 and $30 uh, for youth ages uh, 17 and younger for $20 and $30 for the adults. Um, you know, free to breathe the Southwest Florida at Gmail. That's how you get in touch with Tom. Yep. Um, no, uh, let's see. To get in touch with me? Yeah. It's a uh, P.E. Capiello, C A P P I E L L O at gmail.com. Okay. Um, and with that, get in touch with Tom. Uh, you've written a book mm -hmm. about uh, fighting, right. living with lung cancer, uh, his journey, my journey, it says. Uh, beautiful picture, Yoko. Who's that guy with her? I know. <laughs> Steve Jobs. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does. Uh, but. <coughs> What have people come to you and said? Uh, any any poignant stories? I mean, of people just coming up to you and saying, "I can't believe you're still alive. You're at stage three A, and you know you're still here with us." Uh, you know, I'm on a trial drug uh, called Stimuvax. I go up to Newport Ritchie every six weeks to get these injections, um, and my doctor, uh, I was going to say about a year ago. Uh, was giving me the injections, and he says, I can't believe you're still here. Jeez. And I said to him, I, you know, he's... Don't you have faith in the drug, Doc? You've been giving it to me <laughs> right. and charging me all this time. First of all, it's a double-blind study, so neither he nor I know whether I'm actually getting the real deal drug or not. Um, but anyway, he says uh, that, and I said to him, uh, how many people with stage 3 lung cancer have you treated uh, over the course of your career? He's been, he's probably in his uh, mid 60s, I said, and he said uh, probably. I'm. He, he was guessing. He said maybe a thousand. I said, how many people with stage three lung cancer have you treated uh, that are that were here five years later? He said a handful. Okay. He said a handful, That's and crazy. he said most of them passed away immediately after five years. That's great. Well, and that's what you got to look at right now, and keeping healthy. Every day is a blessing. Every day, we don't waste any time. Yeah, Yoko said that you were buying the popcorn and everything else. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> she, she won't let me eat popcorn. I mean, uh, 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 she, she's very big on uh, on eating right, you know, nutrition, and everything yeah, else. Sure. With with the run and with, with the walk. Yeah. Does the exercise help clear your mind? Exercise is is very very good for anybody with with cancer. Yeah. Um, and I walk every day with my dog, or my dog walks me, I should say. There you go. Um, so, people ask me a lot, you know, how have you done? Well, you know, I did everything I could to 
fight the cancer. And then I've done everything I can in terms of nutrition, three meals a day, don't snack too much, stay away from sugars as much as possible. Fried foods. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fried yeah. <laughs> foods. Tacos and burritos are out. <laughs> that kind of thing. All right, right now it's uh, quarter till time. He's got our, our weather and our traffic coming up right now. We'll be back with Tom. Talk a little bit about where you can get the book. Pick up the book.